Hello everyone, welcome to a native event. This is a recreation by the fine fellows of the VA Guard of the Battle of Bovines. Now, I know what you're thinking, it could be Bovines, but anyway, either way, it's not the Battle of Cows. Essentially, this is a battle that took place on the 27th of July, 1214, and is a medieval battle which ended the 20, or so I should say, the 1202 to 1214 Anglo-French War. Now, obviously, bear in mind, this was sort of the early development of the French Middle Ages. And as a result of this, it meant that the King of England, King John, lost control of certain areas of France, including their ancestral lands of Normandy. Now, off the back of that, the very disgruntled barons and lords basically came up with an articles to kind of put the king in check, otherwise known as the Magna Carta. So, now obviously they can't rename the names for certain things, so Rodox and Swadians, but you can see here, fine fellows. Now, bear in mind that Philip Augustus of France was up against an army consisting predominantly of Imperial German, English, and Flemish soldiers. And they were led by Otto IV, the Holy Roman Empire in the north, or the Holy Roman Emperor in the north. So, a fine recreation of that battle to take place courtesy of our friends in the Viegard. And you can see I am going to butcher, absolutely butcher the names on this event. You just know it. So you can see the German names, Kruger, Grunwald, Hermann on the left, on the Rodox, and you can see obviously the French names, Le Maréchal, Charlemagne, Robert de Cursolo, the Fontaines, the Loics, the Druze, oh my goodness, the Courtenays, the Vermandois, the Couillon, many, many names at this battle now. The question is whether or not the French forces will be able to delete, uh, delete, to defeat even, the forces arrayed against them, the Germans and the Flemish and everybody else. So, a very, very important moment and battle as far as the establishment of the French kingdom is concerned because obviously bear in mind for those of you who don't know your history Henry the first Plantagenet King yeah probably one of the first to come over from France and the Plantagenets whose symbol was the broom then went on to have many many heirs and obviously until 1066 when William the Bastard from Normandy made his way over and took out Harold and established his kingship. Now, when he established his kingship over there in 1066 in England, bear in mind he was still the landowner of Normandy. Now, the history of that has affected the situation between the French and the English for some time. And so eventually this battle was to try and reclaim some of that territory and return it to the Kingdom of France. So, now obviously, if for whatever reason I've got any of my information wrong, I'm sure you lovely people in comments will tell me so. But, can't expect to get everything right. However, we're just, oh goodness, just drive by and these fine, <laughs> These fine Rodok fellas, look at this. Just complete drive by. <laughs> Eventually they're going to break an attack. There we go, they've broken an attack. They're pissed now. Oh dear. So everybody is getting themselves ready to go. And then we shall bring you the first round. Well, here we are, looking 
at the fine fellows standing stalwart crossbowmen maybe let's see I'm seeing crossbows or what looks like crossbows at the back there but they are waiting you've got cavalry over on the left flank armed with large pole arms for the murderization of the enemy especially the cavalry and they're all on pretty quick horses as well so they're gonna uh, basically sacrifice armor for speed that will be the roaming hit squad of horse here are the defenders or i should say the opposing army look at them don't they look fantastic in this line the shield wall the marks look at that find german heraldry on those saw on the uh, shields looking fantastic meanwhile they have also their own fast cavalry fine lancers there's corporal puddle and there is reno de martin now the heavy horse emperor otten the fourth there he is indeed look at that on the battlefield and now you can see moving out with the horse as the soldiers the line move out the lancemen remain static and look at this this is just beautiful the guys making their way out captain von grunwald of the fine imperial german army now let's go and have a look and see what their opposing forces in the french army are up to the high the high speed cavalry and look at this the forces making their way forward heavy cavalry at the rear swordsmen soldiers sergeants protected crossbowmen on their flanks all these guys with beautiful chain mail and scale mail armor and now it's going to kick off ladies and gentlemen the two teams are facing up against each other now look at this the horses continue to rattle around by the backs and look at that you can see an engagement with the horses already the two fast cavalry on the left flank already making a play as these guys waiting for what they believe will be the arrow storm coming in from the flemish and the imperial germans and oh look at that long spay a delacour taken down as well that was a name from history long spay A long spear and look at this the cavalry continuing to battle out here on the field for dominance a few taken down look at that fantastic stuff so here now you can see look at this the forces starting to push in now on the right flank the germans out with their picks the French waiting. Are they going to fire? Oh, there we go. The first arrow goes in and there we go. They break an attack and they are slightly outnumbered, but horses are going to dive into the battle. And look at that, the way the line literally curves around the side and it looks like they're in danger of being overwhelmed. And in comes the German cavalry, the Flemish troops as well supporting and this is a massive melee in the center with the cavalry continuing to hang around the periphery and this is a dangerous situation now for the french they're in danger of being overwhelmed by the sheer weight of numbers look at that all of the french have fallen pretty much all of the french have fallen on the battlefield one man there full contact 
And he's making contact with the enemy. Good God, look at this. He's in deep, deep doo-doo. And his teammates as well fighting for every minute. Every minute they can survive is a moment they can save. The honour of France. And you can see... Overwhelmed by sheer weight of numbers. But still, Albert survives. Look at this. He is now going to cheese it in the opposite direction. Away from the enemy forces. Turns and fights. Forces his enemy to fight. Flee back to the safety of his team. A very brutal battle there in the centre between the Imperial German and Flemish forces and the members of the fledgling French Empire. So, here we are. Now there with Otton the Fourth, Emperor. Looking devilishly handsome, fine beardage on the gentleman. Moves over to the light cavalry. Checks to make sure those guys are ready to go, you can see them. Lance is ready to go. The high speed attack. Here. More footmen. With lances. And over here. The Flemish troops and Germans. With Captain von Grunwald. Private Gottfried. George Gerhard. Fine German names. And now they move forward. As the cavalry. Doesn't appear to be any cavalry on their flanks right now. It could be a tricky situation. They could find themselves enclosed. We'll have to wait and see how things turn out. Look at that. So, the Swadian Empire, which is the French. The Rodox, which is their opponents. And on with Wilhelm von Myth. Good God, what a name. Fantastic name, sir. And there is Paul. And there, Henri. Oh my goodness. I'm not even going to go anywhere near that. Sorry, Henri. So, the Emperor. And, you know, you might have the odd... The odd French or German turncoat in on the opposite side's army. May happen. Unfortunate situation, you know. I don't know. Maybe he's uh, been ostracised by the French... And has to find a way of fighting. Maybe his sort of way of getting the France that he wants. Albeit under the sway of the Holy Roman Emperor. So. Let's see. As here. The forces line up. Look at that. Look at that scale rail. That's just beautiful stuff, isn't it? Imagine the amount of work that goes into making something like that. The protection it gives. All those little sort of rings all connected together. Such artwork. Absolutely brilliant. And necessary in order to protect a man's life. So, here we have the light infantry carrying war lances. And the heavy, uh, so I should say here, look at this. The heavy leading forward. As they are the spearhead. With the lights on either flank. And they're moving forward. And they're charging the lances go down. And they're charging into the Germans. Oh, it's like bowling. Oh dear, bowling for Germans. This is terrible stuff as they've lost a few. But they managed to hold their line together. Brave souls, one and all. Look at these fellows. And now they're leapt upon by the French forces. Come charging in. And the melee now breaks out with great ferocity and dread. As horses continue to make their way through the forces. Trying to barge over the odd person here and there. And they've got inside the middle here. Look at this. One of the French getting involved. Unfortunately, not to the degree that he would have liked as he dies to a sword. And one of the other cake tin heads, it's Renan Zarius. He gets barged to the floor and murdered. Oh dear. Another horsey, Philippe Auguste. He's looking for that all-important knockover, maybe the stab. And kill. 
He's got to be careful. He's in a well-armoured horse. But he's being chased down by Walfram Beaumont. Beauframont, I should say. Chevalier. Now, let's see. And there is the puddle. Fine horsey work coming in from the puddle. Look at this. Oh, lovely swing into that poor man. Poor old Romuel de Zuck. Does Acres? 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 I'm not 100% certain. But either way, here's Robert Herman. One of the Imperial troops making his way back in the line reforms. Look at that spiky ball. That's going to put an absolute nightmare of a headache on you. And the fine, fine standards of the Prussians, the Germans, however you wish to call them. Obviously, what you call them is dependent on the t period we're talking about. So, we'll call them the Germans. These fine fellows, the Flemish. With their unique boards and their picks. Those picks are just, oh, ouch. Getting a bleeding head just thinking about that. And you can see here, out come the spiky balls. Who doesn't enjoy a good spiky ball? But when you're hit by one, it's definitely less, less enjoyable horse crash. And they're trying to finish off the remainder of the heavy cav. As the heavy cav is trying to charge into the enemy. And he's getting overwhelmed by the sheer weight of numbers. Captain Jack's in there as well. The man is off his horse and he's brutally murdered. In the scrum of the footman and the sergeants. And the pole arms. Now, there's no poles here. Well, not yet, anyway. Ah, Captain Schweifensteiger. Oh, goodness. And there we have it. We're on to the next round. So, here we are on the next round. You can see villages in the background. Need to say villagers hiding out. Do not want to get involved with the battle that is occurring. They'll be hiding in their hopefully well protected holes, the hovels. There will still be some resources that can be claimed by the soldiers. They'll probably end up drinking the river dry, maybe sailing off with the boats. Look at that nice little trebuchet in there as well. Lovely stuff indeed. And a windmill. Fine windmilling loveliness. Look at that. For obviously creating flour. For the cooking. And the making of the bread. So. As we fly over the top of the hamlet. To the well mown grass. Well, it looks like it I know. But there's no, there's no lawn mowers in this era. Sorry boys and girls. So. Here is Kaliu. And in, you can see the light cavalry on both flanks supporting the heavy cavalry at the front with the footman leading up the way with nasty, nasty pole arms. Look at that to deal with the soldiers. Oh, sorry, to deal with the cavalry. Oh, a fine crown there. jean Paul de Relay. Doesn't he look lovely? So... Here they are getting set up. They see the enemy cavalry charge towards them, heavy and light. Oh, this is going to be brutal. And they go charging in. Oh, people barge to the floor almost immediately. And this is going to be a nasty situation because they're also being followed up by the cavalry. The heavy cavalry all over the place. They're now coming over to these guys as well, trying to do some damage on these fellas. David Fawcett. Trying to de uh, deny any attack upon him. And trying to watch out for those nasty pole arms coming in from the enemy. And Robert Villiers is team killed. As inevitably always happens in this kind of battle. Francois making his way through with a little bit of pole arm fun. And making his way around on the high speed horsey. And there we go, a bit of Grand Theft horsey from Hardman. Gets back onto a horse, albeit a fast but not well-armoured one. And now let's have a look in the main central area. 
As you can see then, after the battle, the French suffering massive casualties as a result of the cavalry being sent in first to do the damage, followed up by the footman. And that was a very unfortunate, a very fortunate ha horse location. Oh, who's this? Here's Armand. There goes Armand. Here's Jean de Montmiral. Montmiral. Literally a caked in head. Under serious pressure. His teammate, Pierre de Courtenay. Looking to support each other if they can. Oh, he gets barged to the floor. And now he's going back to back with his teammate. His teammate's just lost his sword. That's a bad situation. Look out behind him. Down he goes, poor Jean. And now Pierre has lost his sword, his shield. This could be a very nasty situation. You see, he's trying to literally cover every eventuality. But the trouble is he's out there on his own. And he's got line troops and footmen coming after him. That's going to be a problem. And there we have it. And so we're in on the next round. More battly fun continuing. Francois de Alojoni, I think. Alojoni, I, I'm not sure. I can literally hear the VA guard wincing every time I say these names, literally like suffering physical pain as a result of my pronunciation. So, but I apologize because I am after all an ignorant British person. So, let's see. Oh goodness, someone ginger. Jacques de Vallon. And also the guys making their way in. There's Robert de Curselou. And over on the far end, Pierre de Courtenay. So, you can see here that the Swadians, the French, definitely have the advantage against them with lack of superior numbers. And look at that, the cavalry, the light cavalry is on either flank. And the heavy cavalry in the middle, supporting the footman. Now here you can see two sets of light cavalry, or possibly one set of heavy cavalry, and one set of light cavalry moving out. And now they're gonna be a danger to the French because obviously the light cavalry can attack fast, the heavy cavalry are the war horses and the sheer muscle to force through the center. We'll have to wait and see how that works. So the French trying to cover all the bases and look at that. The light cavalry sitting over there, over on the left side and there you can see the heavy cavalry Moving as, here we go, the light cavalry come charging in from the left flank, forcing the other cavalries to then immediately move out and engage. And they're going to try and cut them to pieces with sheer weight of numbers. There's no cavalry at the moment from the Imperial forces on the right. But now look at this. Because the entire cavalry has gone to the left flank, this leaves the right flank open to horse the attack. And the Emperor has seen the advantage and chooses to strike at the same time. As the footmen make their way forward, the Imperial and Flemish troops go in for the melee, while the remaining cavalry ignore the footmen and go in to clear what is essentially the biggest threat to them, the other cavalry. And the melee in the centre continues now, then it's up to, once these guys have cleared out the enemy and the remaining horse, it is down to them to then finish off the main scrum in the center of the remaining soldiers. And Philippe is about to have a bad day. He's barging down people left, right and center. Lopping off bonces wherever he can find them. Using that, oh dear, this is gonna be a bad situation for him. Multiple stabs into his horsey. And his horsey escapes just in time. But with Henri de Brabant after him. Out with the large chopper. Misses. Now, let's see. The French have again, it looks like, 
Lost the melee in the center. Random horsey. Hello, random horse. See, look, he's even afraid of the camera. So, the Imperial forces trying to finish off the remainder. Nice kill there by Guillaume de Gallon. Doesn't he look lovely? Oh, look at that. He's over the top. Barging to the floor, the enemy. Trying to get more kills. Oh, barging more to the floor. And you can see here the Flemish and the German Imperial troops. Remain steadfast. They have the pole arms to deal with the horses. And now they've got to deal with fellas like this. Kalyu going after Heavy Horse. This is going to be a hard battle for him. And there's Bernard. The Tronyak. Look at that. He's taking a few slices. And this is going to be a very nasty situation for him. He has the advantage of the speed of the horse. Opposing his enemies. But there's also a lot of spikes. And nasty poles out there. To do him some damage. And makes it right through the centre. But. Saying that more cavalry. Courtesy of the French remain. One of the last of the cavalry. Philippe Auguste. Oh he's crashed into the horse. Into the tree. But it looks like they're going to regroup. Here they are regrouping their boys together. The French cavalry have some heavies. They have quite a few lights. A spare heavy horse there. Regrouping the forces now. And look at this. Absolutely beautiful. And now you can see them getting ready to deal. With the horsemen coming at them. Oh heavens, look at that! Barreling down on them! There's Captain Von Grunwald going in for a fine stab at the front. And literally the square that they tried to have did not last very long. But the murderization lasted even less time. Look at that. Taken down goes one of the French cavalrymen. And another man from the Imperial forces goes down. So there you have it. Another lap. Another lap. Another round even. And we move on to the next one. So we make our way towards the location of the French army camp. These fine fellows fighting for the establishment of their country to take back the lands that were currently owned by William the Bastard and his heirs. So let's see. Girard de Troy, Bernard de Tronyac. Now, they're going with the same strategy, or looks like it anyway. You've got the light cavalry circling around the left. You've got another light cavalry on the right. And now you've got the heavy cavalry making their way through and making a very early charge. Causing, causing I should say, the enemy cavalry to flee back to the safety of their lines and their crossbowmen. And there we go. The cavalry peels away as they did not see it to be an advantage to go any further. Could have left themselves open to ambush from light cavalry either side. So a little foray there by the German cavalry. Moving back to the safety of their footmen and archers and crossbowmen. So... Let's see how things go. Hmm, random hole. I thought that was a hole, actually. It's actually a bush. So my bush recognition skills are not what they should be. Hey-ho. Ah, a cadet from the 37 drugs. And here is George Gerhard. And in comes... Look at that! The heavy French cavalry going for that line troop. Holy crap. And in come the foot troop. Supporting them very quickly indeed. They're trying to take out the enemy. At the same time as the foot troops over here. Getting to a stand up battle. With the French forces. 
Meanwhile, the cavalry floats around the edges. Trying to clear up the mess. And it's a hard fought battle here for the French. Okay. So they've just been reiterating a few rules. So cavalrymen need to stay with their captain for obvious reasons. So the heavy in the center. There's Philippe Gautier, Mathieu de Montmorency. There's Guillaume de Garland. And Romuald de Zacre. Good God, no. What horrible, horrible pronunciations by Chad there. So. Look at these brutal pole arms being carried. Obviously, a little bit of protection on the end. Protect your fingers. Now. Oh. <laughs> Somebody followed through just a little bit too far there, poor old Roman. And now you can see, oh, look at that. That shield, just beautiful stuff. Oh, listen to that cavalry. The light cavalry on the right flank. That cavalry over there? No, that's buildings. It's difficult to tell from this distance. And in they go. On to the Imperial German Army troops. And you can see them trying to defend. Look at this. Oh, don't they look fantastic? Friedrich, Fridolin Seitz, Hermann Lottenberg, Peter Bender. George Bayer, Siegfried Burig, Von Dagenfield, Dresden, and there is Martin Zimmerman. So, <laughs> and in come the French forces. Charging forward. And there's Robert. Look at this. In they go. So the Germans go in for the melee battle and their cavalry moves around to try and envelop and they immediately come under attack from the heavy cavalry. So the light cavalry with the heavy cavalry going on a full roundabout movement. The German cavalry, under the command of the Emperor, come charging around to try and clear up what's left. As we move over here, as the forces of the French army, oh, Rie de Montmorey, the late man himself. So, there's some brutality going on on the battlefield. Many casualties are falling. And it's not looking good. Oh dear. Philippe de Dru taking a stab. Trying to get out of the way of the horses. Oh, taking a stab to the chest. That could be unfortunate. Oh, crashing his horse. That's very unfortunate. And that's why... Yeah, don't want to crash your horse. Or as Bove will come charging in and batter the snot out of you with a spiky ball. So, sharpened kill. And Rookley. Gottfried and Pfeffer as well. Fine German names. And George Gerhard. And now they've got the guys on the back foot. Down goes another man. In the field, the king has fallen. 
That king is dead. Wow. You can see there the force is a little bit in favour of the Germans and the Holy Roman Empire. So, here they are getting ready. Look at this fine fellow, doesn't he look handsome? Obviously, as handsome as you can with a bucket on your head, but you know, hey ho, diddly do. Would not the end of the world. So there we go. All the forces moving in. Pierre de Courtenay. Lucas, Lucas Beaufort. Or Beaufort. David Fawcett. And De La Bat. So. They're following the heavy cavalry in this time. The light cavalry out on left and right flank. Try and protect them. And this is the problem that they have, is just the sheer weight of numbers. So, whether or not they can actually force the battle, or force the enemy to back off, take out their line as much as possible. That's going to be the problem for them in dealing with the German army. And the Flemish, and the rest. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so he's certainly lacking a little bit of armour today. So I'm not sure if the Queen remembered to make his armour. But we'll have to wait and see. Either way, he does look a little bit bare-chested and spartan. So, the lines set up. Pole arms. Nasty, sp nasty spears to take out the horse. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. It looks like the horses have dismounted. They've dismounted from their heavy horse, and now they engage. As they force the enemy to engage them. You've then got the defenders in the center coming under attack from all directions. Look at that. Oh, I love that. The way he holds a sword. Just looks so good. So good. Going in for a slice and a dice. And he's going to watch out. Oh, he gets hit in the back. As you're watching Romold getting into the scrum in the center. Taking some shots from all directions. And finally murdered. Oh, look at those halberds and spears and absolutely brutal weaponry. The king has died already. And we're resetting. And on to the next battle any minute now. <laughs> Shout of Hodor. And there, George Gerhard. Oh God, here comes this cavalry. As down goes one of the cavalrymen. D-horse. Well ran both from all. Chevalier himself, and he gets a horse. Certainly a more heavy armored horse than his previous steed. Look at that. And oh dear, there's a team kill in there as well. And look at that, Carl von Rebeck fighting for his life. Going up against Robert Rognon. Or Rognon. And David Fawcett. Look at that fine double handed slicing going in from David. Look at that. He's on the back foot now. Oh, a fine missed turn. Into the enemy, Robert Villar. Look at that. Oh, he goes down nearby. He's got to watch his back. This man is very bloodied right now. He's holding his sword, ready to pounce. 
Got to watch his back as there goes an enemy. Also one of his teammates. Look at that. Down she goes. Sadly, was not to survive. David making his way back. And now, we follow the likes of Mr. Ron Rebeck. Oh, fine kill into David. Oh, lovely hammer work. That's horrible spiky hammer. Oh, my goodness. That's so brutal. Blocked by the shield until finally murdered by Robert. Look at that. So, back past the absolute sea of bodies on the battlefield. Spikes into the ground. Horses lay dying or dead. And Gerard Surf, Sokof, possibly, still remains alive. So, wonder what could be happening next. Oh, they're after the king. They're after the king. Otto is under pressure. The emperor. Oh, fighting for survival and a fine stab into the enemy. Let's see what happens. Horse on horsey action. Oh dear. This could be unfortunate. The long haired emperor. For that all important first stab. If he can get it, his enemies behind him now could take his horse out from under him. That could be a dangerous situation. Got that. Waiting for the inevitable. Circling around. And the Emperor is the sole remaining survivor. Asking if he can dismount for the final battle. Because otherwise he could just keep circling round and round. There we go. All charge. There's the Emperor. Turns to fight. I mean, it's a duel, ladies and gentlemen, between the Emperor and de Gallon. Fine slice. Look at that. Oh, a fine slice into the Emperor. The Emperor is now bleeding, but he's hit his enemy more than once. Very nasty situation for the Emperor. Doesn't have a lot of armor, but fine blocking coming in from Otton. And the horse gets murdered, so he can't escape. And down goes the Emperor. The French win the day.